Okay, so going along with the theme of my Southern Mountain Rifle, which is kind of comically focused around my wiener dog. The rifle is short and long, and so is my wiener dog Badger. Um, so I'm adding a couple motifs to kind of honor Badger and his adventurous life that he's had. Um, and one of the ways I'm doing that is in my toe plate. So traditionally to protect the toe of one of these Southern Mountain Rifles, which is very narrow and pointed as you go into the toe, it's very fragile. That's where the rifle is sitting and gets beat up a lot just as you're loading and using it. Uh, and these toe plates are put on there to protect the wood stock from chipping or cracking or anything. So my toe plate is going to be kind of a rectangular toe plate, which is standard for how those go, but a lot of times up at the end, or the I guess the head of the toe plate, <laughs> um, there are some details added. And my idea was to add the silhouette of my dog as if you were looking at him from the top down, which as a wiener dog, that's pretty much the only way we see him. So what I've done is I've sketched out on a piece of paper here, the silhouette of what I'm trying to do. And I have then kind of transferred this to the rifle to get an idea of how that would look and kind of mashed everything up. And then I made up this actual pattern here. Then went down to the metal shop here and found a chunk of iron or steel that was similar and trimmed it up so that it was a similar width and a similar length that I could make my toe plate out of. Now when you're making your toe plate it's important to try to find a piece of material that is a similar thickness to your butt plate as you get to the toe. This helps create the illusion that your toe plate and your butt plate are kind of from the same piece. Next in this process, I'm gonna start shaping the toe plate. To do that, I'm gonna sketch my pattern onto this steel plate and I'm gonna take it down just to the belt grinder and start working on shaping this as, to get it as close as I can. Here's the rough shape ground in with the belt grinder and now it's time to get out the files and really refine this to the stock. At this point now, I've got the toe plate shaped and filed and ready to, I believe, start inletting. Here you can see it up close. I've got my, my Sharpie sketch here and I've filed down to that. And when you're filing something like this, the kind of the, the tip or trick that I was given is to file the edges at an angle so that if up here is the top or the face that's going to be seen, we want to file so that we have an angle going in and down along these edges here. This makes sure that when we mark or scribe the stock for our inletting, that our inlet is going to be thinner than our material here. To, that way we can expand the inlet slowly and have a tighter, cleaner inlet. We aren't having large gaps that we need to go in and fill. To lay this out, I'm gonna be just using the blade of an X-Acto knife, and that gives me a precise line that I can then start inletting to start fitting the toe plate to the stock. I repeat this process on both sides of the toe plate, uh, kind of looking at it from the top down, the left and the right faces here. And then I go over all the way around once more just to make sure that I have a full even scribing before I unclamp this. Making sure that we get this done the first time, make sure I don't have to reline all this up and we can move forward. These are the carving tools that I'm using to do all of the inlay on this muzzleloader. I've got an X-Acto knife, and then I've got a small set of palm chisels. A real common brand you're gonna be able to find is Swiss made. And for all of this inletting, I'm using these simple chisels, a couple different angles of skews, a flat chisel, as well as that number five Swiss made there on the right gouge. It's not a very deep gouge, but it's enough that I can remove some wood from the bottom to even out the inlay. It's a simple set of tools, but it's gonna do everything that we need here, and it's something that you can very easily get started with. To start the inletting process, I'm using my small skew, and I'm making a series of stop cuts here, or stabbing cuts, as a lot of people refer to them as. Pressing the skew at an angle, matching the draw angle that we put on the toe plate all the way around here. These are simple short cuts, just deepening that scribe mark that I put in there with the X-Acto knife. This is just to make sure that we don't get out of bounds when we start removing wood and we keep a nice tight inlet. You'll see some gunsmiths 
go around an eighth and or a sixteenth of an inch inside of their lines to make sure that they are absolutely not going outside of those lines with their inletting. From there, I take the stock over to a vise with some direct light. It's, direct light is really important when we're doing carving or inletting like this, so we get a nice cast shadow. And I begin working around that stop cut or those stab cuts with that same skew, removing wood along the edge, kind of establishing the first level of, of wood removal here that would be underneath the toe plate. I'm going very carefully around these edges, especially where I'm getting into end grain. We don't want anything outside of the toe plate to chip or crack. So we want to make sure our chisels are nice and sharp and that we're not putting too much pressure anywhere that could cause any damage. With our edges established, I can start going into kind of the center of this inletting area and start to match the depth of the interior of the carving with the exterior of the carving, just removing wood in the center here, constantly checking back and forth with my toe plate to see what is level and what's not. When we're removing wood like this, something I kind of learned a little bit the painful way uh, by making some mistakes is just checking often. I'm not making many cuts at all. I'm kind of going an even pass throughout the entire front of this inlet here, and then I'm checking again. Not removing too much each time, just taking off these little chips like you see here, and then going and checking, and then starting over again. When it comes to inletting the rectangular parts of this piece, we don't need to try to individually carve out each area. We can get a large flat mill file like this and really hog that wood right out of there so we can focus on more of the intimate inletting that we need to do at the front of the toe plate. At this point, I have my major inlet established here, and I'm starting to check how it fits with my part. Now you can use inletting black with this, or you know, just around the shop I have some old Sharpies that I mark on the metal and then I'll just kind of check and see how we're looking. Now I have a little bit of extra material removed up here at the nose. So I'm <laughs> after seeing that, I'm much more cautious with this black. And using this just allows me to make sure that I'm only removing pieces or parts of wood that are interfering with my inlet. So I have a little bit over here on this right hand side and a little bit back here. So I'm going to remove those black marks and then I'm going to continue deepening my inlet here and working my way back with my inletting. Now I have some difficulty here and I've already nicked this edge a little bit over here with my file of this one tab where it is pretty thin. So what I'm doing is I'm going to carve pretty much to about back here, about that line. And this going back here towards the toe, I'm just going to use my file to get that thickness. Now, I'm more concerned with the inlet up here than I am back here. Because this stock is curved as it goes up towards the trigger assembly, if I can kind of shape that into the wood, there's going to be less tension on the toe plate as we fit it. Now I can take it down to the anvil and shape it a little bit more, but I think I can get most of the way without changing anything just in how I remove this wood. So we're going to get the chisels back out some and keep working on this inlet. I have it much deeper up here at the nose than I am back here at the ears. So we're going to start here at this line and start working our way in. So just like right there, where I know that I have this the grain is going this way and I know I have this thin piece here. As I get up close to that I want to make sure that I'm using my tool to cut across the grain. That's going to make sure that my tool isn't going to catch and jump in the grain and just pop that piece out there. We want to protect that. So anytime we get near to that piece we want to work across the grain. So I'm just using my skew here just gently working my way up to it. Using a skew here is really nice because it's so versatile. I have that little tip just like I do on an X-Acto knife. And I can use that to get up into these grooves. Or this inlet, I should say. And move some material. I think about this process just like if I was 
doing wood carving um, to make a sculpture or something. And you see, I mean, everybody talks about it with long rifle carving. But you have this process where you go in and you stab. And you make what I call a stop cut. And then you can come in and work up to that stop cut. And that stop cut is going to stop your cut, or stop your tool, on that defined line and protect the wood behind it. I'm not too concerned with this looking neat and clean in here. As long as everything fits, ideally we'll never see this wood again. But I do want the outline to be clean. you look at the back, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're riding up on your butt plate. Okay, so I need to take more You need off. to shorten this a little bit okay. more. And that'll get that down. And then we're going to have to just kind of see. You tend to be a little deeper on this side than you are on this side. Okay. Which I'm not too worried about, but you've got to take in here. Okay. See your problem? Yeah. You you work too long in one place. Okay. Which is what I always do. It's what you always do, yeah. Got a serious gap there. So what do we do? Let's get this shortened and get this in so we know where we are. Okay? And I want to get this riding on wood back here. And then we're gonna figure out what to do there. Okay? I've got my toe plate fitted now and I think fully inlet. And I just want to talk about a couple of the things that I went through and some of the difficulties that I had getting it fitted. This Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle has a little bit of a curve as you go from underneath the cheek back to the toe. So if you're working with a straight piece of iron like I am here, you'll notice that it's gonna be difficult to get that to match up. I talked about a little bit earlier trying to match that up depending on how you're removing wood. But I kind of gotten into a bind where I thought that I was removing material from an area that needed it removed and it actually didn't and I needed to go back to the toe where I contacted the butt plate and remove it there. So one of the things you can do to check the straightness of your inletting is turn your iron on its side as long as you know that your edges are straight and use that straight edge to see where you can see light through your piece now, before you really do any of that though, you wanna make sure that your depth is okay. So like on my toe plate, the areas up on the nose and around the brow area here are thinner than the whole plate on the back here. So what I can do with this, and you can do this with any plate that has a narrow area anywhere on it, is I can line that narrow area up in the inlet and check the depth of any spot of my inlet that that area will fit in. And with that, I can either eyeball it or I can put a straight edge on top of the wood and the steel there to see how close I am and if I need to remove any more material. On these Kilber kits, the machining is super tight, so we don't wanna to remove too much. We can get into a spot where we're starting to kind of mess with or alter the overall shape, and we don't wanna do that. So the general rule of thumb here, and with any inletting really, is to check often and do a little bit of work in between. There's, I could have probably done twice as much checking on my inlet as I did. And marking your plate with inletting black often and checking it against your inlet is a surefire way to make sure that you're gonna get a clean inlet every time. If you don't have a perfect inlet like I have on this one, don't sweat it. Uh, this is my second muzzleloader or the third muzzleloader kit that I've built and it's not gonna be the last one that I have. A little couple spots there on the inlet that aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect and it's all a learning experience. So don't be afraid to try it and if you you have a couple little gaps on your inlet don't sweat it keep learning adjust and remember the things that you've done and plan for your future projects so you can do better every time once I had the front end of my toe plate meaning the ears brow and nose area set I and really shaped and formed where I had the inlet established before I called it quits on the fitting I wanted to make sure that the rear end of the toe plate fit in and lined up with the butt plate. So you can see here, I filed the edge 
of my toe plate here at an angle so that it matches as close to perfect as I can make it to the butt plate and the angle of the butt plate, the toe of the stock, and what will be our toe plate. So we have a nice continuous edge all the way around the bottom of our rifle. This was something that I hadn't thought about doing when I was trying to fit the rest of the toe plate. I got caught up in the complexity of the front end of my toe plate here and forgot about the simple thing, which is just making sure that the edge or the back end of my plate fitted. To mount the plate, we need to find a center to align the three screws. So what I do when I'm looking for a center is I'll set my calipers and then I'll just kind of drag a line from both sides and that way between this space between those two lines is the center always. So you can see where the center is versus where you have it drawn. And I would go ahead and mark on my center then. Which is like a center punch? Yeah, I just usually take like this guy here. You, know, you want to get on that line so I usually lay my center punch over like that. So. And don't make a real deep one to start with, like I'm off just a little, so I can kind of tap that back, kind of get what I want. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So there you go. Got your three holes touched on there. And what I do usually while I'm working on is I use those like short brass screws or something. Then I use longer screws when I actually assemble it, so I'm getting into new wood and you know getting a good bite. After drilling and countersinking the holes for the toe plate, I line it up with the stock and center it on the stock where I want it to be mounted, and then I use a bench awl to mark kind of like a center punch would into the stock where I'm going to drill for my screw holes. Using a drill bit a little smaller than the width of my screw, I start drilling with a small electric drill a hole for this screw. Now I'm using a temporary brass screw here, which can be a little finicky. This brass isn't very strong, so as soon as that screw starts to become too tight, I back off and deepen the hole. It's very easy to snap the heads off of one of these brass screws, and I don't wanna do that at all. You know, I don't want to have to redrill and repair this toe plate. The final screws for this will be some steel or iron screws that match the look of the overall rifle. These kind of junky brass screws though just are great for getting beat up and used in the shop. With the toe plate fully mounted now, it's time to start shaping it and matching it to the stock the same way that we would with our butt plate um, that we have attached earlier here. I'm using just a large flat mill file here and focusing on keeping the file on the metal of the toe plate and off of the wood. Like we've said uh, countless times now, <laughs> these Kibler stocks already come pretty well shaped. You don't really need to do any stock shaping and I want to preserve those nice lines that come with the machine stock. So keep that file on that toe plate and we're starting to file that angle to match the stock as the stock comes around and comes into the toe of the rifle. And there you have it. This is our completed do-it-yourself at-home toe plate to match this Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle. Once again, I'm Ethan and I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching.